Hello, grade 10s. In today's lesson, we will be applying what we know about trigonometric ratios on the Cartesian plane. Let's start by revising what we've already learned. Quadrant 1 is between 0 and 90 degrees. Quadrant 2 is between 90 and 180 degrees. Quadrant 3 is between 180 and 270 degrees. And quadrant 4 is between 270 and 360 degrees. All trig ratios are positive in quadrant 1. Only sine is positive in quadrant 2. The other ratios are negative. Only tan is positive in quadrant 3. The other ratios are negative. Only cos is positive in quadrant 4. The other ratios are negative. This is often referred to as the cost diagram. Remember that you need to know all of this off by heart. Let's apply this information in a question. If the sine of theta equals 3 over 5, and theta is greater than 90 degrees, and smaller than 360 degrees, determine with the aid of a sketch the value of cos theta and tan theta. Whenever a question tells us to draw a sketch, it usually means that the sketch is worth some marks. The sketch will help us see where theta lies on the Cartesian plane. So let's start by figuring out where it is. According to the question, sine theta is equal to 3 divided by 5, which means that sine theta is positive. The cos diagram tells us that sine is positive in the first and second quadrants. We mark these quadrants with red ticks. The restriction on theta is that theta is greater than 90 degrees and smaller than 360 degrees. This indicates that theta may lie in quadrants 2, 3 or 4. We mark this with green ticks. Quadrant 2 is the only place where there is both a red tick and a green tick. This means that theta must lie in quadrant 2. To draw the sketch, we first draw a line from the origin to a point in the second quadrant. We complete the right angle triangle by drawing a line perpendicular onto the x-axis. From the question, we know that sine theta is equal to 3 over 5, and we also know that sine theta is equal to y over r. Therefore, y is equal to 3, and r is equal to 5. x is still an unknown value. Now that we have put all the given information onto a sketch, it's quite easy to see what we need to find for the value of x. Because we know the value of two of the sides, we can use Pythagoras to find the other side. x squared equals 5 squared minus 3 squared. Therefore, x squared equals 16. Taking the square root on both sides gives an answer of positive or negative 4. We have two possible answers for x. This is because positive 4 times positive 4 equals 16, and negative 4 times negative 4 also equals 16. The quadrant that theta is in will tell us which answer is correct. Let's go back to our sketch to find out. The sketch shows theta in quadrant 2. x will be negative in quadrant 2, so that means that the only correct value for x is negative 4. Let's use this sketch to answer the questions. The first one asked us to determine cos theta. We know that cos theta is equal to x over r. Therefore, cos theta equals negative 4 over 5. Number 2 asked us to determine tan theta. We know that tan theta is equal to y over x, which means that tan theta is equal to 3 over negative 4. This question has shown us that if we analyze the information given to us in the question and use it to draw a sketch, answering the question that is to follow is not such a difficult task. 
Remember that you will not be able to answer these questions if you have not memorized the trigonometric ratios and the cost diagram. That brings us to the end of this lesson. Remember to try the task video at the end of this section. You'll also be able to learn more about trigonometry on our website www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Thank you for joining us, grade 10s. Goodbye.